Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achena. Welcome to episode 33 of Game Programming. So, last time I talked about making a void tile. That is a tile that sort of goes into, I guess, that gets used when there's an error or something because we don't just want to leave it blank. We don't just want to have like a black thing. At the moment, we've got return null in our get tile method, which means that theoretically because this tile method, it returns a tile. If that tile is null, obviously that will throw a null pointer exception. Um, and the thing with that is, you know, that could potentially crash our game if we don't handle that. And the other thing is we, we just, we never want to be actually returning null. We want to actually have a type of tile, like an actual valid tile object that gets returned when something doesn't go according to plan or just to fill it up. So in other words, if someone, I don't know, if someone gets out of the map, for example, we don't really want to be drawing nothing like some games actually do. Um, my microphone keeps falling down. Um, we, we don't, we don't, we don't want to be doing that. What we want to be doing is if someone, this is just one example, by the way, if someone gets out of the map in our game, um, we want to draw a specific type of tile because obviously the map is an infinite, um, and there is a boundary to the map. If someone manages to go above and beyond that boundary, they'll just be present, presented with a, a void tile, quote unquote. Um, so that is a tile that actually has not, basically no data. But again, it will have data. It'll just have dummy data. Okay, think of it that way. So let's create that tile. So if we go into our tile class, we've got this public static tile grass, right? Again, we'll do the same thing, but we'll create a void tile out of it. So public static tile void tile. Um, obviously, you can't call it void because that's the keyword in Java. We'll just call it void tile. And we'll set it equal to new void tile. And we'll have to make a sprite for it, which we'll do in a minute. Um, so let's actually go right now and create a sprite for it. So if we hit the sprite, if we open sprite.java, we, uh, we can assemble a new, uh, a new sprite here. And um, we don't actually have to draw a sprite because I'll sort of get to that in a minute. But we don't actually have to go into paint.net or any other program, open up our sprite sheet and draw ourselves a void sprite. Because again, the void sprite will just be a solid black color at this point. Um, so we can easily do that with code. We don't actually have to draw that. So public static sprite void sprite equals new sprite. And now this current constructor actually asks for a sprite sheet, meaning that the problem with that is, you know, that means that it will actually draw a value from a sprite sheet. As you can see, it loads it and it does all this. We don't want it to do that though, right? We want to create an alternate constructor which just simply, which just simply creates a new sprite with, let's just say, it just creates a sprite with a color. So if we go over here and type in public, oops, public sprite, and then let's just go in size again, uh, and we'll go in color. All right, simple as that. And over here, um, we'll again we'll set size equal to size. And we'll set pixels equals to new int size times size. And then we'll set color. I'm spelling everything, everything in Australian, by the way. So there you go, color with a U. Um, so yeah, so now we'll make a set color method. This is actually adding quite a, quite a lot of lines of code. You guys always complain that I don't add enough lines of code. So here you are. Um, yeah, so set color and set color will actually simply fill our pixel array with a particular color. Now we actually need to set the color to something. So we'll just put color as a parameter here and type in color here. So obviously the input that we put into here will flow through to our set color and it will actually be accessible in our set color method. Um, so we'll simply use a for loop to cycle through everything. So for in i equals zero, i is less than the size of our pixels, size times size of our pixels. So that way it'll cover everything. It'll cover every single, um, it'll cover every single index of our pixels thing because we've set pixels equal to, we've set pixels equal to new uh, in size times size. Um, and uh, over here, we'll simply say pixels i equals our color. And that's it. That, that is literally how simple it is. So over here, now that we've made this new constructor, which does this set color thing, all we'll do over here is over here, the new sprite, we'll, um, we'll type in 
we need to specify a size and a color. So the size will be 16 and the color will be zero, which is black. And that, that's it, all right? Uh, if, you want to, if you want to do white, you have to type this, all right? That is white. So that's the hexadecimal for white. Um, if you guys want to set it to a particular color or if you actually just want to make tiles that are specific colors, you can actually go to a website called colorpicker.com. I'll show you that website right over here. Here it is, colorpicker.com. And what you can do here is you can select any color you want, such as this blue, for example. You can copy the hexadecimal that it gives you, this number up here. Um, and then you actually just paste it. You, you just go 0x to, to specify that the, the, the number that you're about to give is a hexadecimal. And then you paste in your number. And that will give you a void tile with that particular color. So we'll just leave it as that for now. But um, that is how we create the sprite for that. And now let's go back into our tile. And then um, over here where, where we were creating our void tile, we have to specify a sprite, of course. So we'll type sprite.void sprite. And then let's actually create this void tile subclass. So let's create the class. It will automatically make uh, it extend tile. So we'll just fix this error by adding the constructor that we need to add. And then finally, we can actually just go back to our grass tile and just copy and paste this. Honestly, that's how easy it is. So in other words, I've added a render method into, um, I've added a render method into our void tile class and it is as simple as just doing that. In fact, we probably could um, put that into the super class right over here. Um, but we, we won't do that for now. So yeah, um, and again, that will simply render um, our, it, we've created a void tile, which is just tile with a particular color that we'll use for, um, for rendering tiles that basically shouldn't exist. So if we go in over here into our screen class, sorry, into our level class, so level.java, instead of returning null, we can now return tile.void tile, which is again, obviously a valid object whenever we actually, for some reason, don't satisfy the criteria. So yeah. So that's how we use void tiles and you'll, you'll be able to see them in action in the future. But that's the end of this episode. So if you did like the video, please hit the like button, give it a favorite and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.